Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to meet you over the air. My name is Stephen Wu. In this small section, I'd like to share with you how DFI think of a small form-factor device for IoT applications. Have you envisioned how IoT gonna change our business and our life? Imagine that we can freely extract the insight from the things surrounding us for decision making and for action, anytime and anywhere, as our wish. To realize that there's no free lunch, we have to establish a powerful system. Connecting the things dispersing everywhere and collecting meaningful data from them. The problem is, there are trillions of things in our real world. How are we gonna transform all of the legacy into IoT aware things in a short time? It's unlikely we will rebuild everything for that. A more realistic way to do so is we embed a small yet powerful things with some sensing and communication capability into only selective things with priority, maybe for business reason, maybe for security and safety function, or maybe for people welfare. To smoothly transition legacy into IoT aware, the size does matter for IoT device. The smaller the device can be, the better chance we can seamlessly embed an IoT device into the things whatever they are. Now, here comes to a simple question. How small is small enough? Unfortunately, there is no simple answer for this. It really depends on many different factors. The most critical one should be how much free space is available to accommodate an IoT device in the object we would like it transformed to IoT aware. The other factor includes how many interfaces physically we need to preserve to interconnect our device for data movement. We also need to seriously take into account for how we would like to organize the raw data, how to process them, and how to interpret the meanings. With all these factors together, we pretty much define or limit the outlet design of an IoT device. Based on the requirement, we have the design constraints set. There are of course many techniques available to fit the design into the constraint from system level down to board level. In real practice, it is worthy spending huge amount of time on the high level design strategy by properly select a better set structure or platform architecture for a function. With that in place, we can then further reduce the size by proper form factor selection or component package type. Lastly, we can fine tuning everything on the detailed design level by optimizing the placement the routing, the stacking, the layering. We will spend a bit more time to explain on the board level practice. This selection of platform architecture dominates 60% contribution to the board size. This percentage is only for reference, not a definite number. As you can see, the difference is really significant. For the rule of thumb, you got to have a good reason to park your design on the one you have chosen. Even though the design has been dominated by the selection of architecture, we still have other headroom to reduce the board space. In recent years, the wafer level trip scale package is one of a black through to reduce the IC footprint. This technology allows the IC final package very close to its die size. It accounts for roughly 20% reduction in footprint. This is a very good advancement from the legacy design. The other technology black through is 3D packaging. We can now reduce the footprint by stacking multiple die or stacking multiple packages into one. It will greatly reduce the board space required to pack more function in a small footprint space. MEMS is another breakthrough. We can now integrate electronic function and mechanical function in a very small package for sensing application. Any device require a sensor in the design can greatly reduce the board space by this technology. The last area we have had room to reduce the board space is on PCB material and fabrication process advancement. In general, there are many trades we route through PCB, from several thousand to tens of thousands. Each trace has its limitation on trace widths and the spacing between them. 
This factor is dominated by design requirement, by PCB material, and by the fabrication process capability. If we can improve this factor to a certain amount, we can greatly reduce the space required for the trace routing. And therefore, we can increase the chip count we can place on the final PCB assembly. The technology keeps evolving from high-density interconnection to any layer HDI and now substrate like PCB. The HDI process has the spacing limitation on 60 to 100 micrometer, but for a substrate like PCB, this number reduced to 20 to 30 micrometer. This change is significant. Converting to chip count density, SLP has roughly two times density compared to HDI. We can freely park our design into the best technology. However, there is cost for the advancement in terms of price and availability, lead time, year rate, and ruggedness. So we have to take everything into in our design consideration. The technology advancement is closing the boundary among different service providers. For instance, the invention of wafer level chip scale package does break the bonding between foundry and package service provider. It even caused internal competition between the two parties. Similarly, the advancement of system in package also blacken the boundary between package and service provider and system assembly service provider. It caused direct competition between the two parties too now. So who will dominate the industry eventually? Is there any party the only winner to take it all? How about the ecosystem situation? Will it be competition, cooperation, or competition? I don't see there's easy answer for this question too. It does involve two adversarial factors. One is scale and production efficiency. The other is service and customization flexibility. It's easy to differentiate from one factor to the other. The party has advantage on one factor will also present disadvantage on the other side. So. It is not end of the story for the comeback yet. For time being, market will decide who will serve this job better and who will effectively drive the technology advancement quicker than the others. There are a variety choice of small form factor product in the market available for IoT application. We can simply classify the product into two different groups. The first group is friendly to develop. The second group is friendly to production use. They look similar but do have very different character. The representative product for the first group friendly to developer are Raspberry Pi, Arduino or other similar maker board. They focus more on affordable price, rich feature and common IO interface. The second group friendly to production use are many supplied by many IPC maker. DFI is one of them. They focus more on providing flexible customization service, careful design to guarantee durability and reliability for long-term use, and commitment to product liability for mission-critical application. The application developer can make their choice based on the character of different products and their project needs for different life cycle. If you are looking for production use for your IoT project, DFI will be a good partner for you. We have a reach of the short product family, scaling from 1.8 inch to 3.5 inch form factor, with variety of choice in performance option. In a case you can find one really fit to your project, we can also be a friendly audience partner to build a dedicated one for you. Here you can find a fact sheet for DFI. We are part of BenQ Kistar Group Company and have a strong commitment to the success of our customer. Please feel free to contact us. We are happy to provide you professional and friendly service.